Well, as of Monday, I am officially 27 years old and here are 17 lessons that I wish that I knew earlier. Lesson number one is to find happiness where you're at now. This one is kind of interesting for me because I've always had these massive goals in my life. I wanted to be worth this amount of money. I wanted to drive these kind of cars. I wanted to have this kind of apartment. And as I started checking off those boxes, I started to realize that I wasn't really any happier when I achieved those things. Sure, there was some kind of momentary gratification, but as far as long lasting happiness is concerned, it didn't really matter. And it kind of came to its head when about 10 days ago, I made $1 million in four hours and everybody around me was freaking out. But for me, it really didn't make anything feel that different. I was already a millionaire and just a million more dollars wasn't really going to transform my life at all. And I was really grateful, ironically, because I was thinking that, thank God I had awareness earlier on and I realized that I was happy when I had no money and I was happy in these different stages of my life because if I had just continued to push off being happy, oh, I'll be happy when I lose this weight, I'll be happy when I get this car, I'll be happy when I get this girlfriend, I'll be happy when I make this amount of money, well, if you keep on delaying it until then, when it finally happens, you'll realize that that doesn't bring you happiness. What brings you happiness is internal. And so that's my recommendation for you. And what I wish I knew as a younger self was that don't keep on putting it off. Sure, have goals. I really do love goals. But make sure that no matter where you are right now, you are truly happy internally. And then when you achieve those additional things, you can be even happier if that's the case. Now, lesson number two is that money actually does make life more fun. You should enjoy money. You should want money. Don't be afraid to scream it from the rooftops that you love to make money and you wanna make a million dollars or $10 million or $100,000, whatever else it is, because we live in a society where everyone makes everybody feel bad. You can't talk about money. You can't discuss money. You can't show your money. I am very transparent. My friends and I are all very transparent with how much money we make because we're not afraid of it. And as soon as you vocalize it, it just stops being this scared thing that everybody else seems to be afraid of. Instead, what it becomes is kind of almost empowering. In the society we live in, in today, People really measure your success essentially based on how much money you have. And money buys you, honestly, in my opinion, better relationships. It buys you a better quality of life. It gets you access to things you could never have before, lets you help out people you really care about. So don't be afraid to want money. And really, I think everyone here should want it. They should seek it and they should use it to enrich their lives. Now for lesson number three, I want you to stop and just take a look around you right now. And even think the past few days, what has your environment been? Who have you been spending time with? What have you guys been doing? And has it been moving you closer to your goals or further away from your goals? You may think I'm exaggerating a little bit, but in reality, this is the truth. And it hit me like a ton of bricks whenever I was in my hometown and I started my own business everybody was making fun of me. They were making fun of my Instagram stories. They were making fun of my YouTube videos. People thought I was in network marketing. You know, everyone just was making all of these assumptions and I acted like it didn't get to me, right? I acted real tough and acted like I didn't care, but these were the same people that I had confided in and been friends with for 10, 15 years. And for them to turn around on me just because I was trying to achieve something a little bit greater than maybe what they were trying to achieve, they attacked me and they might not have done it maliciously. It might not have been consciously, but it happened. And because of that, I could feel myself shrinking my goals and I could feel myself posting less on Instagram and posting less on YouTube because I was, I was afraid to go and see them out later and have them make fun of me. And so I've realized it now and I realized it then. And that's why after that happened, I finally got fed up with it. And I literally moved out in five days from my hometown, my hometown where I lived most of my life packed all my stuff up, I sold my car in two days, and I moved to uh, Spain. And I spent a few months there, and I really got realigned, and then I found some other incredible people. I moved to San Diego with them who were aligned with my goals, who pushed me every single day, and everything changed for me, okay? So when I talk about your environment and changing your environment, I'm talking about who you're spending time with, what kind of goals that they have, then I'm talking about your physical environment as well. Does it motivate you? Are you waking up in like a cold, damp place every single day where people are yelling at you and it's a mess, or are you waking up overlooking you know, the water and yachts and, and pl uh, like private jets or whatever else it is. And if you're in one of those situations and you can't just jump to the other situation, just get around that other situation as much as possible. You know, get, Go to cities or towns, even just for the day, You know, rent one night in a luxury hotel to taste what it's like to be at the level that you wanna be at. And eventually, if you keep on working hard enough, you'll be able to actually physically change your environment as well.
Now, lesson number four is gonna come at a shocker for a lot of you, and I see almost nobody talking about this, but it's to give back, but don't give back too soon. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that when you start actually seeing success in your life, at least when I saw it in my life and I know some of my closest friends, what happens is all those people, you know, those people I was referencing earlier that were making fun of you on your way up or not supporting you or just staying silent, they're gonna start asking you for favors, primarily money. You shouldn't help them. Now, before all these keyboard warriors jump in the comments and tell me I'm a terrible person, whatever else it is, I'm not saying never help them, but I'm saying that the majority of you watching this video right now are not going to be in the financial position to be helping other people because when you do give money to other people, you pretty much need to write that off as you'll never see that money again. And that's my experience. Even if someone says it's a loan, I'll pay you back. If someone ever gets in the predicament that they need a loan from you, they're already bad at managing money. So you should just assume that you're never going to see that money. So when people ask me for a loan, I say, don't worry about it. I'm not treating this as a loan. You know, if you pay me back, that's great. But in reality, I'm not really that worried about it. So get yourself to a position that you can make those judgment calls because what happens is a few things. If you start giving out money too early, you stop your momentum and growth inside of your business. Some of the best investments you can make in the beginning of your business or the beginning of your own personal development journey are back in yourself, right? Paying to get yourself into a good apartment, into the right environment, you know, into masterminds, into coaching programs, into cryptocurrency, into stocks, into real estate, stuff that can build you generational wealth. And if on the come up while you're doing this momentum, you have other people just siphoning money from you, it's very easy for you to fall back down again. Hold Hold off, tell people, hey, you know, best of luck. I'm still just don't tell anybody you have any money and just say best of luck. I'm still figuring out myself. And then when you have so much money coming in that you literally don't know what to do with it, then you can bend back down and help the people. But if you help them too early, like they say in, in an airline, right? Put your mask on first before you help somebody else. All right. So lesson number five is to stop drinking alcohol and stop doing drugs. Now, a lot of you on here probably think I'm not addicted to drugs or I don't have an alcohol problem. I only do it on Fridays or I only do it, you know, one glass when I come home whatever else it is. But for me personally, I did the same thing. I was just a quote unquote social drinker. And what I realized was that a few things were happening. Number one, I was spending time going out and socializing with people that were in the wrong environment that didn't have the same goals as me. And so I wasn't spending time working on my business. Number two, alcohol and drugs were simply a distraction for me. I was just thinking, okay, you know, if I go out and do this, I can pretty much hit dopamine in my brain and I can be happy for a little while instead of focusing on the really hard stuff in my life or really sitting by myself and thinking, am I happy for where I am at right now? And number three, and I think this is kind of the most important thing was that for a lot of you watching this, you think, oh, I just have a drink or two drinks, whatever else it is. For me personally, if I have a, uh, you know, a glass of alcohol or whatever else it is, the next morning, I'm not talking about that night, maybe you think it's Friday night, whatever else it is. The next morning, my brain is so foggy, I cannot focus. And if you're somebody who is used to high performance and doesn't ever drink alcohol, then you understand the difference between a cloudy mind and a sharp mind. And a cloudy mind, prevents you from making hard decisions. It prevents you from shooting great content and being able to riff things off your head. It prevents you from being creative, it prevents you from working hard and focusing all because you had one or two glasses of wine or tequila or whatever else it is the night before. So I'm not saying forever and I'm not saying that I don't ever drink, but what I'm saying is that if you're really not happy where you are right now, if you are smoking, drinking, doing anything else, I challenge you to stop for 90 days and just see what the difference is. I went an entire, like, I think it was 14 months total without one drop of alcohol, any drugs. And that was some of the most focused work I've ever done in my entire life. Lesson number six is my favorite quote, which is action leads to insight more often than insight leads to action. And I'll break that down for you really quickly. What that essentially means is that most people just think of taking actions. Okay, should I start a business? Should I not start a business? Should I go to law school? Should I not go to law school? Should I date this girl? Should I not date this girl? Whatever else it is. And they're just playing these like scenarios in their mind, millions of different scenarios, if it's the right thing or the wrong thing to do. And in reality, you don't really ever get any insight from it. Sure, you could make a little bit of a better judgment, but in my personal experience, 
What's better is that uh, action leads to insight. So to actually take the action and then measure the result from it. Okay. After I started the business, was this the right thing to do? Or after I decided to go to law school, was this the right thing to do? After I went to law school, whatever else it is, because just sitting there and thinking about it, you will never know if it is the right thing to do. That's what essentially regret is, is regretting usually not doing something. Like Gary Vee says, if you go to these retirement homes, most of the people don't say they regret the things they did. They say they regret the things they never did. So I challenge you, if you watch this, to just write that down somewhere and always remind yourself action leads to insight more often than insight leads to action. So pretty much stop thinking about it and just do it. And then you'll know afterwards whether that was the right or the wrong thing to do. Lesson number seven is work-life harmony, not work-life balance. Yesterday on my Instagram, I posted a photo of me working on Saturday night, building some assets out for my sales team. And one person said, why don't you just enjoy life instead of working on a Saturday night? And I, I started typing back a reply and then I just erased it because I realized that that person, you know, their, their mindset's totally gone. But my reality is that I love what I do. I really love, I love coaching people. I love running ads. I love building sales funnels. I love transforming lives. Most people in today's society see it as this dichotomy, work and life, right? Two separate things. This is after 5 p.m. This is 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And they keep them separate. And so for that to happen, you're assuming they can never be together, which is why I like the word work-life harmony or the phrase work-life harmony instead. For me, my relationships, my best friends, all these other things are all synchronized with my work. Some of my best friends, the guys that I used to live with, I do work with as well. And I just came back from a five-day birthday snowboarding trip in Breckenridge, Colorado, and we were like snowboarding parts of the day and then we were grinding parts of the day and then we were like helping each other out with our businesses parts of the day. And that's like my dream life is where all of that kind of co-mingles together. And it doesn't always work that way. And sure, if there's people that are outside of your business, are they gonna be hurt sometimes? Yes, that is definitely the case. But I don't think it needs to be these two diametrically opposite things. I think you should look to kind of commingle them together. And if you do that, it doesn't really feel like work anymore. And thus you can put more work in, which means you can get ahead of a lot, a lot more people and uh, make a lot more money, have a lot more impact, et cetera, et cetera. Whoa, 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 really quickly. If you're enjoying this video, please sure to smash the like button down below and also hit subscribe if you wanna get notified anytime I put out another video just like this, which is twice a week. Lesson number eight is to understand the importance of attention. Attention is the most valuable currency in 2021. What is attention? This is attention right here. Instagram is attention. Facebook is attention. YouTube is attention. You speaking on stage is attention. Whatever else it is, those are all aspects of attention. I have captured your attention. And even if you're not a business owner, having attention is so, so powerful because it takes years to build up attention. It's not like you can snap your fingers and all of a sudden you have people following you and listening to you. But once you do build it up, anything you decide to do, whether it's start a business, start a product line, start a YouTube channel, whatever it could be, you have those people's attention, you have those people's loyalty. And so because of that, you can usually monetize it. And I'm not saying monetize it in a bad way, but I'm saying if you really believe in what you're selling or what you're doing, then you really should strive to get as much attention as possible so that you can help as many people as possible. So don't be worried about likes and followers and subscribers and all that other baloney. Those are all vanity metrics. But if you put out quality content and you do it over a period of time, eventually, even if you don't have an idea of whatever you wanna sell or work on right now, you'll be able to come up with an idea based on the feedback from the audience that's giving you this attention that you can eventually monetize and potentially live a dream life where you're essentially working anywhere you want to, helping the people that you want to and using online virtual programs in order to do it. Lesson number nine is to learn to say no. Over the past few years, it has become alarmingly apparent to me that so much more can be done by saying no and focusing on one thing than saying yes and appeasing everyone. Lesson number 10 is that looks do matter. Are you triggered yet? Look, I'm not saying that it's the only thing that matters, but I'm saying that it matters a lot and a lot more than people are willing to admit, okay? Whether you like it or not, people do judge a book by its cover, right? 90% of communication is nonverbal. So if you're showing up to business meetings, you're showing up to dates or whatever else it is, and you're not clean cut, you're unshaven, you're wearing untailored clothes, whatever else it is, they're not even listening to the words that are coming out of your mouth. They're just looking you up and down and going, why am I here right now? And I shouldn't be taking advice from this person. You know, I, I run a business accelerator called Scaling with Systems. And if people saw me and I was very disheveled and I didn't really care about my appearances, whatever else 
else it is, then people would probably not take me seriously. They wouldn't want to do business with me and they wouldn't trust me. On top of that, what I'll say is that don't be afraid to invest in some kind of status symbol. Okay. So it could be a nice watch, could be a nice car, could be a tailored suit, whatever else it is that subtly lets somebody knows, okay, they care enough about themselves to do this. So I should maybe listen to what they have to say. If I go to a business meeting or I'm shooting an ad or I'm shooting a video and in the background is my new car or in the background is my, you know, apartment on the water, whether people admit it or not consciously or subconsciously, I've run enough ads and know enough about marketing to say that it does make a difference. So if you want to have influence and capture attention, like I was talking about earlier, don't be afraid to invest in your appearance. Now, lesson number 11 is for my shiny object entrepreneurs out there. You know who you are and I've been one as well. These are the people that, you know, they try to start a marketing agency. They try to start e-commerce. They try to start coaching. They try to do drop shipping. They do everything under the sun because what happens is they start something because it looks shiny and new. Someone ran an ad and said that this is the best thing to do in 2021. And they go, Oh great. Yes. I want to do that thing. And they start it and then it becomes hard and they're just jumping from thing to thing, to thing, to thing. And that's how 99% of people live their lives is not actually focusing on one thing. And one thing that I've done really well in the past two and a half years is become incredibly good at one thing. And for me, it's helping scale business to business businesses. Like if you are in a high ticket business to business offer, such as an agency or, or recruiting or any kind of online coaching program, I am incredibly good at helping you grow your business. I mean, we have literally hundreds of in-depth case studies at scalingwithsystems.com slash case studies that show and prove this. And the only reason I've been able to do that, and I've been around longer than three months and I haven't been in all these like lawsuits or whatever else it is, is because I've just focused on that one thing for two plus years. So if you're wondering why you're not getting any traction in your life, it's most likely because as soon as things get hard, you just jump to something else. And the reality is, is in order to actually achieve any kind of real greatness in your life, you have to get over this hump where it, things are really hard because you suck at them because you've never done it before. But as soon as you start doing it and you're doing it more and more and more again, all of a sudden you really start enjoying it. Okay. That could go with anything else in your life. It could be money. For example, I really hated making money when I was younger uh, or when I was in college because I sucked at it. I was making $5, $8 an hour as a waiter and I'd have some good nights, some other nights. So I hated work. But once I started making a lot of money, I started really loving work. So focus on one thing for multiple years and you'll just blow a hole in your industry. Lesson number 12 is to put your money to work for you. So here's a quick little disclaimer. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not an investment guru, you know, do whatever you think is best for you. But in my own personal experience and in the experience of a lot of my clients, it is a lot better to take that cash that's just sitting in your bank account and your quote unquote saving at 0.00000001% in your bank account. It's better to put it to work for you. And the way that I always invest is number one, I look to see if I can invest in myself, whether it's getting myself in a better environment, into books, into coaching programs, into masterminds, whatever else it is. Then number two would be to invest into actual other assets that yield me return. So these could be, for example, real estate or cryptocurrency, or it could be, you know, uh, bridge loans or whatever else it is where instead of sitting, your having your cash sit in your bank account, you're putting it to work where it's giving you three, five, 10, 15, 20% return on investment. And that's really how you build long-term generational wealth. It's not by working your way to it. Okay. Lesson number 13 goes back to the appearance one, but just work out every day. It's not that hard to do. I don't understand why people are like shocked when they don't work out and they eat junk food and they wonder why they don't ever have any energy or they can't walk up a flight of stairs or whatever else it is. So just spend 15, 20, 30 minutes every single day working out. Everyone thinks that in shape people love working out. I actually don't really love working out a lot of the time. There are plenty of days that I don't want to work out, but I still go there and do it because I know the benefits it has to my life. And I actually don't really love working out a lot of the time. There are plenty of days that I don't want to work out, but I still go there and do it because I know the benefits it has to my life. And if you're an entrepreneur, it really gives you a lot of mental clarity. And I know people say, Oh, I don't have time to work out. Look, everybody has the same 24 hours in a day. And what you don't want to be is that overly obese person pulling out of a Lamborghini because no one's going to be impressed with it. Cause if you ever try to get out of a Lamborghini before, like I have, it's already hard enough to do it as it is because it's so low to the ground. But if you add 300 pounds to it, you look like an absolute fool. So if this triggered you, it's likely a sign that you probably need to look at your health, look at your habits and change some things so that you can 
can actually enjoy the money that you're making later on. Lesson number 14 is to build discipline, not motivation. Okay. So motivation is fleeting. Motivation is like motivational YouTube videos or motivational speakers like Tony Robbins or Les Brown. And I have nothing against those guys. Those guys actually got me through a really hard time in my life when I was trying to figure out if I wanted to go to law school, I wanted to start a business. I was having family issues. So I'm not knocking those people. What, what I am saying is that Every single day, if you're just looking for motivation and looking for motivation all the time, then you'll never actually be able to achieve anything great because motivation comes and goes, right? It just, it's dependent on your emotions. It depends on what kind of YouTube video you're watching right now, but discipline, discipline is doing what you said you were going to do long after you said you were going to do it, even if nobody else is watching. So if you live by yourself and it's Friday night, of course, if you go out and have a drink or you watch Netflix or movies, or whatever else it is, no one's going to say, Oh, you know, you shouldn't do that. That's really bad. But you know, on the inside that it is bad. And you know, you really have two choices there. One brings you closer towards your goals and the other pulls you further away from them. And so I'm not motivated all the time. If I only worked out when I was motivated, then I would be fat and out of shape. If I only built my business or worked my business when I was motivated to do it and I was inspired to do it, then I wouldn't have two multi seven figure companies. So understand the difference between the two and you can use motivation to give you like a little bit of a jump, but build in habits and discipline that'll get you there a lot faster and keep you there a lot longer. Lesson number 15 may sound silly to you, but it's don't sleep on sleep. In this 24 seven hustle culture we live in right now, it may seem that everybody is grinding and working all the time. That means that they're not sleeping. They're only getting one to two hours of sleep as they get up the next day and just jump right into a cold plunge and then jump right into being a millionaire. And that's because all you see are YouTube videos and all you see are Instagram highlight reels or stories. And that's really not what it is. Sleep is absolutely pivotal for your success. You need it to rest your body and rest your mind. I know when I only get six or seven hours of sleep, my mind is just as cloudy as if I had four or five glasses of wine the night before. And I can tell the difference. And so I invest in my sleep and I make it a priority in my life. I have a calendar notification that goes off on my phone whenever it's time to go to bed. And I have an alarm clock that is across the room whenever it's time to wake up. And I invest in a good mattress. I invest in good sheets. I invest in blackout curtains. I put in red lights around my bed so that whenever it's nighttime, I don't have that blue or bright light. So my, my eyes can adjust. And I spend a lot of time and energy thinking about sleep and focusing on getting quality sleep because I know the difference. And for me to wake up in the morning, I can do, if you are thinking you're hustling and you're getting two hours of sleep and then you're working for eight hours in that day, I money back guarantee you, I can get more done in two hours after having restful sleep than you can in eight hours after having no sleep. Okay. So don't try to be this, you know, hustle culture person that doesn't sleep at all. Focus on it, invest in it, and then watch how different your days are and the quality of the work that you produce is. Lesson number 16 is that if anybody has ever done the thing that you want to do, then you can do it too. That's why I love social media. Everybody hates on social media. They say it's the worst thing in the world. And sure, I do think it is toxic in some way or the other, that being said, what social media does you allow you to do is for you to see somebody like me, who's 27 years old and having made multiple millions of dollars after taxes and see that that's doable. Or maybe you see other people that are, I know people younger than me that are worth multiple millions of dollars after taxes. So you know that it's achievable, right? If you grow up in a small town and you don't have access to internet and everybody around you is telling you, you have to be a farmer, you have to be a farmer, you have to be a farmer, then farming is the only thing that you know. And so you think that, okay, that's the only thing I can do because everybody else around me is a farmer. Or, you know, another example is that in like some ghetto neighborhoods, people that are grown up there, that's all they see. That's all their environment is like, you know, gangs and drugs. And so they don't know what else is achievable. They only think that their options are that. And so that's what they do. And that's why social media does come into handy. That's actually how I got into a business because I saw somebody else I knew being successful online. And I had a conversation with them and I realized that I could do it too. So remember if somebody else has achieved the thing at any point in their life, you can do the exact same thing. And finally, lesson number 17 is to learn to love yourself more than you love anybody else. So I'll end this with a little bit of a deeper note, but this is something that I've always struggled with. Okay. Because I've always tried to push myself kind of like I talked about in the very beginning about trying to find happiness where you're at right now. And I always kind of berate myself for being, you know, bad and, and, you know, 
sleeping in or having, you know, watching a TV show or whatever else it is. And look, that does happen. I'm not a perfect figure. I make mistakes all of the time. But one of the best exercises I've ever done, I read this in a great book, is every single morning I write down three things that I did great from the day before. So I always write down the things that I should have done that I didn't do the day before or the things I did wrong from the day before. But one of the best things I could ever do for my mental health was to write down three things that I did really well from the day before. It could be, you know, built a new asset for my company. It could be calling my mom or my dad. It could be spending time with my girlfriend. But writing that down actually acknowledges it. And as an entrepreneur, a lot of you I know are entrepreneurs, you don't have a boss to look down on you and saying, hey, you're doing a good job right now. You are the boss. So the only thing you usually say to yourself is self-criticism. And I'm not saying it's not good to be hard on yourself so that you can stay disciplined. But what I am saying is that you're stuck with you for the rest of your life. So you might as well learn to love that person. Now, if you do want to know a little bit more about how I've made millions of dollars after taxes before the age of 25, I have a free course down below that actually walks you through my entire story. And then it shows you how you can essentially duplicate the things that I did so you can potentially achieve the same thing. So all you have to do is click the link in the description down below and you can get access to that free course. It's over four and a half hours of content right now. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash the like button, hit subscribe so you can get notified when I put out videos like this every single week. And make sure you watch the next video on your screen that talks about a graph that totally transformed my life for the better. I'll see you guys in the next video.